let, let me start with at least a hospital that's of different of a, uh, of a decent size. So I'll ask Arvin to first make us understand, according to him, what a smart hospital means. Smart hospital is something that's got its focus on adoption of technology to drive effective clinical outcomes, ensure high levels of patient quality and safety, and ensure that the patient gets the best treatment, the best service experience, and the enterprise as such has high levels of operational efficiency. So that's what really is, I would say, a smart hospital. Smart hospital is not a hospital that is bejeweled with gadgets. Gadgets that don't add value to outcomes should not be considered smart hospitals. Another, another hospital of the same uh, level of rush is Hinduja, which I have seen myself personally. Uh, Mr. Joy, you want to tell what all have you seen? Because you have been there with Hinduja since how many years uh, has that been? Nine years. So nine years, what is the difference in it? Are people looking for better service quality? Are people looking for everything to be much more smarter? So definitely the patient expectations mm -hmm. have gone up. And uh, you know, when you're in a competitive market, you need to ensure the customer experience, your patient experience. So I will tell you another way that hospitals are not only trying to be smart, they are trying to be smarter, smartest. Okay? I think many of the hospitals, including us, we are also evolving because of the market pressure and change in the market dynamics. And during that, we are required to bring a lot of technologies and things like that. In the previous session, we have spoken about we had, uh, at one point of time, uh, packs. And then we realized that if we really need to satisfy my patients, I need to have a faster turnaround. And we realized that if I go with the traditional reporting, it may not work out, I need to have a speech to text. So that made us to get into a speech to text, which has considerably reduced the turnaround, turnaround time for the radiology. Report similarly for LIS for the lab information system, and we are uh, we adopted the technology in terms of these appointments and other things much before. So we have seen the results that we could retain and we could keep our patients satisfied. But I want to add one more point. What you started with that today it is not the chief information officer; they need to be the SIOs, smart information officer. So each hospital, they need to have that change agent who can adapt the thing much before than their competitors, are, you know, or the market is adapting. So I have given a couple of examples like that. There are many examples what we have done, but very importantly, we have been showered, or rather we have been, you know, uh, we have been given a lot of things like you go for RFID, you go for this sensor technology, and we have realized that all of this may not be a suitable solution for your need because it may cause you know your treatment more costlier than the others and patients will find it difficult to afford because ultimately you are going to recover it so the right selection adoption of technology is essential and as we are operating in a level of 93 percent occupancy and more than thousand patient footfalls in the outpatient department in the same infrastructure we have seen some of these you know adaptation of technology has helped us. Okay. Do Dr. Sunil, uh, so how many years of experience do you have as an administrator? Because you can explain a whole cycle of how things have moved and Delhi Heart and Lung Institute is something that we all know of. So what have you seen as a transformation from where you have seen it? Yeah, and would you like to call a smart administrator today or an administrator? Well, uh, how smart the panelists are is to be judged by the audience. Yeah. So how smart a hospital is is to be judged by the patients. So from the patient's perspective, because you know, ultimately when we are talking of healthcare, patient should be on the topmost priority on our minds. And ultimately we are talking of patient care. The aim is should be that, you know, ultimately smartness does not mean that we should have a smart building, very high tech infrastructure, high tech technology. What is the use of having a high tech uh, technology and infrastructure equipments when we don't have people to operate? when we don't have a trained people, when we don't have uh, the credential doctors to use the technology. So smartness means, smart hospital means, it should be a patient friendly, environmental friendly, safe, and you know, when talking of the safe environment, safe and secure environment, 
and the patient gets timely care. There's a promptness, response time is less, and then it is effective, and then uh, efficient, efficient technology-wise, the financial and operational efficiency is there, and then lastly, it is patient-centric. So ultimately, keeping the patient on the mind, we have to you know label it as a smart or smarter or smartest or it is it's not a smart hospital. So patient first, and I as a patient know the aims, what I would aim when I when I visit a hospital. So these are the factors, the elements which I have uh, told you know that we we require to have in place. And uh, you know the technology of course has evolved in healthcare like you know everybody has has been talking of uh, information technology, uh, EMR, and you know the lab uh, technology, the lab information system, interface of the equipments with the HMS and the barcoding. So ultimate aim is to increase the efficiency, reduce errors, and increase the outcome. So in healthcare, what matters most is the having the uh, increase. I mean, the outcome should be improved. That is the most important factor in the healthcare. As a patient, I would say that if I am admitted in a hospital, you may have you know very high tech uh, everything, but your people are not process driven. People are not smart. There is no efficiency, and that is lack of care. Somewhere there is certain elements missing where I don't feel satisfied. Ultimately, I should go back satisfied. So healthcare is the only industry where you a patient expects medical medical uh, excellence and service excellence both. It is not only the medical excellence. A doctor must, might have treated the patient very well. Patient must have been satisfied with the doctor, with the medical care. But what about the other factors? So it is in totality smart means ultimately it should it should increase patient outcome and patient should go back satisfied. So this okay. is yeah. Yeah. So Br Br Brigade, thank you, sir. Br uh, Brigade Khajuria. So s since. So maybe not the size of Apollo or these hospitals. How important is IT in a smaller setup? As in, like, is it as important as it, it the top five things, or it's still time for it to become the top five most important things in a smaller hospital? If you want to have a patient satisfied, if you want to give a, a kind of a good working environment to your workforce, that is the staff, your technicians, doctors, the caregivers, the nurses, you've got to have the IT as your, I would say, uh, the backbone. And it is a backbone of the hospital. And I feel not only small hospitals, nursing homes, and even in the rural areas, a time has come where you got to take it to the rural areas, where things, in order to have an efficient functioning facility, uh, you got to take it to the rural areas also, so that pa patients out there are also benefited. Smart hospital concept means smaller hospital, that is the size should be small, but it should be completely uh, smart in a sense that it has everything being done with it, the uh, touch button system. You have a console with a uh, patient which gives everything to the patient that he can even uh, lower the temperature of the AC if he wants to, to his or her liking to dim the light or to brighten the light to call the nurse there is a console next door on the tv it's just not the entertainment but also it gives you get yeah, what are the next what are the prognosis how how's the uh, if there is an mri uh, the patient has to go for the mri what does it involve where is it going to be carried out once it is done what are the results and all those things, the EMR, the patient can access the EMR, the doctor can access the EMR, and doctor can, therefore, even when he's at home, he's at his clinic, or he's on the move, he can prescribe, he can see those diagnostic reports, the EMR and everything, and prescribe the medicine. So that's the kind of uh, smart hospitals we are talking about. That is the so, concept, I feel. So, so I may be wrong, I don't know. So I'll, t I'll put it on a jovial way. I had the privilege of, privilege of getting hospitalized in US once. <laughs> and, and the experience is still so different in India. 
over there if the, if the, another doctor came it was not that i had to tell what problem i had the doctor knew exactly what the background was the, if i had to order some medicine everything was done by the hospital in a smart way and it's not that i need to go to the pharmacy down and order all that myself when i get discharged in india it's, so while we are talking about all this is this still a real it's far from the reality i'm i'm sure gunjan you have you have, you have, you have implemented it into hospital so two things is this a reality or just a talk and second for a uh, individual doctor what all can you think can he do at his own smaller clinic which makes him stand out from the rest on a smarter step itself my perspective on a vanilla flavored is a smart hospital is a patient friendly patient sensitive hospital now and what we started doing was capture the patient experience now the patients who used to come to us were not able to speak in english so how would we expect them to type in english so we developed an app which has both the flavors of whether it is english or hindi now if somebody cannot type we had a short uh, we had a button where you can press it and uh, speak out for 30 seconds so you, there's a short narration you can give about your experience now this is the face of the application it had a proper escalation matrix at, at the back end while this thing is being done within couple of minutes the the person who is responsible used to get the feedback he used to analyze the information reach out to the patient within 20 minutes understand in a better way what kind of experience they expecting for example uh, out of little experience that i have on uh, for it's it's not easy to delight a customer or a, as you uh, in in this industry as a patient it's just that he, what he's trying to say let's get some experience what what people are saying is that let's find out what has become a rule today which which we used to think that for example appointment fixing online ensuring that customer experience is well taken the feedbacks are taken well i was just talking to some entrepreneurs here only and they were saying that they have this very beautiful application in which a doctor can talk to all his patients through that application talk to the patients till now the application used to be between a person who would refer a patient so they can talk to all the patients send them weekly updates send them things what's new at his place these are small small things if we start implementing i think these can be simple thing, things that will at least start the step towards a smarter hospital arun i would like, since you are on the panel for health on uh, on uh, smarter hospitals probably would you like to say what the government is trying to do on this quickly see what government is trying to do uh, is one get standards in place uh, get regulations in place and they are not yet law uh if you go to the ministry of health and family welfare website you will see the national electronic medical record and national electronic health record standards notified similarly when you want to talk about health information exchange the government has also published what is called a minimum data set requirement mdds standards which is basically minimum standards required to communicate between two healthcare entities uh so is this specific to healthcare no these are the same standards that are being used right across government so the same standards the same data set the same fields that are used right from the ration card to the passport to aadhar all of them that means everybody is talking the same language so ultimately when you try to collate that information you will be able to do a national health population registry disease surveillance and all of that so that's kind of what is going on from a regulation standpoint also trying to look at regulations in terms of privacy security and advisory on what infrastructure and software has to be such that large hospitals to small hospitals private to public all of them are able to have the same information advisory and some sort of a guidance because many hospitals may not be able to afford that advisory government is looking at getting that advisory free to everybody so that they can get on the course of the and to the it industry trying to set up a certifications entity such that such like healthcare applications are conforming to minimal standards okay so so i uh, just i have a ba banking background also over there for example everybody's financial data needs to be now reported to the bureaus like the sibil the experience of the world is is the government also talking about anything like this in which you have to report the customer patient data to them so that they have a 
full information flow and then we know we can do analytics so is you there anything you have to even today you have to but is that being followed is that that makes us a smarter country if it is not followed and and you'll be surprised to know that that is very much in effect today may not be 100% electronic transmission but if there is an outbreak if there is a birth or a death if there is a certain kind of an adverse drug reaction all of them necessarily have to be reported government when i say government i'm talking st- uh, cent- uh, central government as well as state government because in india health is a state subject is ensuring that such like transactions are as automatically transferred so you have information being transferred on disease registries from hospitals public or private to the respective corporations in cities so that is a regulatory guideline today non compliance has impact